Hello. Good to see you all again. Welcome to the semi-final of All Gathered Up, the show that goes uh, into detail about all the, the, well, the skills and the techniques that come up on the Great British Sewing Bee each week. We've been doing it for seven weeks and eight weeks. This is now week nine. No, I'm confused now because I've written week eight. It is week <laughs> nine. Week nine, which is the semi-final. It's been that long, isn't it, Carol? But... <laughs> I can't um, believe this. Next week, and then it's going to be August, Stuart. I, I know. I can't comprehend. And we do it, as you know, you can see her there. Every week, uh, Master Taylor Couturier, <laughs> Carol Elaine. Hey, Carol. Yes, we're, we're there, the semi-final at last. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I really Abs am. This is going to absolutely. Be a good show. You think of all the skills and the techniques that we've looked at um, over over this series and and last series, well the last three oh, two, oh I forget how many we've done now we've been we're doing it yes, um, it's it's been wonderful and I've just got this to show you uh, from our last video so many comments um, which is wonderful to see uh, and I thought I'd just take uh, a moment to show you Carol um, here we go uh, Mary here Mary B great show please tell us more about the technique of adding piping around the neck and the armhole edges of Carol's dress to hold the garment close to the body sounds like a really top-notch finish well it was a top-notch finish got a quick little picture of it here look at it there can you remember that and 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 with the wonders of my uh, digital pen you can see that piping there um, I don't know whether you can give us any more tips on that now or should we save that for maybe a future upcoming masterclass <laughs> we could do that I mean but, but just briefly Mary B is is that when you add the piping on you can stretch the piping a little bit and that eases in the fabric of the armhole and of the neckline so that brings the garment closer into the body because you're just tightening it up. Instead of adding small darts or gathers, you're just using that piping just to, just to stretch it along. So then that's the effect of that is just that it makes a smaller circle around the arm or around the neckline. There you go. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> we, we always get something. Thank you, Carol. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, next one. And this is, we're saying we're always learning. Look what Linda wrote. I love your reviews of the techniques and how to improve the outcome in the finished garments. I am so enjoying slow sewing and find it as almost uh, meditation. My garments are so much better and I am proud of them. I'm looking forward to the masterclasses. Brilliant series. We've talked about this many times, haven't we? I know the sewing bee is all about fast sewing, but actually, if you want to get better at your sewing, remember I said it a couple of weeks ago, you just got to slow down and, and, and really slow down and enjoy it. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? It does. You, we, we always talked about what it is that you're actually doing. What's happening when you employ a technique? And what I really enjoy about this is, is that this is what we intended. I was a bit bothered. Things were going too fast. People weren't getting the technical help they needed. So we put this together, Stuart, and then we're actually achieving what we set out to do. So we'll talk more about slow sewing and in the master classes, we'll go through things step by step and it'll be interactive. So, you know, we'll be able to work together on this. Absolutely. And, and talking about master classes, a couple more messages that uh, about that. Janie says, yes, please, a master class with Carol I would did. be great. As a self-serving sewer over, over 50 years, I have learned more from these videos than from anywhere else. Wow. <gasps> Oh my goodness! Wow! That's, well, that's something. <laughs> and, that's and we all really, we learn in lovely. so many different ways, don't we? We learn from books, we learn from YouTube now. But to say you, they've learned from from watching these videos—that's a lot. How do you feel about that, Carol? Well, I feel terrific. I mean, that that's great. As I said, this is what we set out to do. I do love to teach, and I like watching this competition because I've judged competitions, I've mentored competitions, and you know I, know, I know the stress that these people are under and I know the difference between having the red light on all the time. I'm not sure how these, um, the episodes are structured, but sorry about that. I'm not sure how <laughs> it's all go at your place, isn't it? It's, it's all, it's, it's welcome to, welcome to London, the heart yeah. of the city. Uh, 
like I said, I'm not sure how much time they really have. We don't know how much time they really have. I think no. four to five hours is like an insane amount of time to try to accomplish some of these things. So we don't really know what kind of pressure they're under. But um, I know I wouldn't want to do that. I've been sewing for 35 years in London and I wouldn't want, no. you know, people over cameras and people over my shoulder. I, I just wouldn't fi would find no peace in that. So um, we can do that with this show. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one uh, published says, yes, please. Focus sessions, a masterclass. I hope you know from the comments how much we enjoy your more education oriented shows and how much they and each of you are a part of the Sewing Bee experience for so many of us. Oh. That's made my day as well. Isn't that wow. lovely? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well. Because... We, we do, as you said, we do love the program. We know it's entertainment, but we just want a bit more, don't we? And and there isn't more out there. So we've done it ourselves, haven't we? We've made it ourselves. Yep. You want something done right, what do you do? Exactly. Uh, Practical Stitcher says, Masterclass with Carol. I am so excited to find out more. Carol, you are such a great teacher. Common sense of sewing. Very clear oh. <laughs> and concise instruction. Yeah, very much so. And oh, another one about learning. Another one uh, to finish off. Another excellent episode. I've avoided invisible sips. In fact, I've only put sips into bags. I'm learning more <laughs> every week from your chats. And that's, oh, that's something bless. I've always said about uh, us with our sewing. We do not... Uh, it doesn't matter where you are on your sewing journey. And that's what you're so good about, Carol. You're so patient with those people who are, who are just starting out, uh, as well as the people that have been sewing for 50 years. But as we've said, seen there, someone's been sewing 50 years and they're still learning. Uh, you're, you're patient with everyone yeah. at every end. And I know it's difficult sometimes to not lose that patience with, with beginners. Uh, uh, and some, well, I, I remember some teachers back in my day when I was teaching, they only want to teach the, the top kids, uh, you know, uh, because that's where they get their enjoyment around. But, but we here embrace all levels of abilities where, wherever you are in your sewing journey, don't we, Carol? That's why I the um, channel, I Never Learned to Sew, because I, I do love to teach very much and I can appreciate, you know, the frustration that if you don't have that skill in your hands and you, you, you look around you and you think, well, everybody sews. Why, why don't I sew? Why can't I sew? And a long time ago, somebody rang me up in tears, practically in shock because they tried to sew and they pricked their finger and they were bleeding. <laughs> so it, I'm not laughing at that. I'm just no. thinking how charming it is. Yeah. And somebody called up and said, can you help me? I'm sewing on a button and I've drawn blood. <laughs> you know, what do I do? We've all done that too. And I thought, well, that's it. Yeah. I've never learned to sew. I don't know how to sew a button on. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to be safe. All these and things. your videos on your YouTube channel are, are brilliant from that point of view. I know we've got lots of our tutorials on there, but some of the early videos before we started doing the sewing bee it's literally back to basics of I never of how to sew a button on, which actually are basics, yet they are fundamentals. We do it all the time. So therefore, perfect it and get it right. Yes. I also enjoyed, Stuart, but you're branching out into the quilting uh, oh, right. idea, the knitting, the crocheting. Yeah. I've learned a lot too. I've watched oh. your videos. I've listened to your chats and I thought, well, maybe in the summer, maybe when I go on holiday, I'll get a pair of knitting needles. I did learn a long time ago, but you know, all these things are really interesting and meditative. Yes. I, somebody yeah. said the word meditation, didn't they? They did, it yes. It is meditative, yeah. it is yeah. relaxing, and it's a life skill yeah. that can help your, your well-being. You know, it's very holistic, the whole thing. Um, right, when you asked for more information, we told you we were going to come back with more information about the masterclass. We're going to go to a slide now where we're going to go through all the details. You can pause it and read it um, uh, and, and, and take it all in um, uh, at your own time. Uh, but basically, this is it. So what Carol is trialing is during the month of August, this August 2023, we plan to run three pilot sessions of our new live interactive masterclass. So see it as a trial. Uh, uh, well, that's the word pilot, isn't it? Um, 
if it works, then it will go on to something further later down the line. That's right, isn't it, Carol? That's it, absolutely, that's correct. That's what we want to do. Each pilot will be about 90 minutes long and will cover a specific challenge that has arisen regularly in the Great British Sewing Bee at some point over the last three years. Uh, Carol will let you know the first topic during uh, next lives session of the final. So you'll get more information because it's be we're planning it as we speak. So if it interests you, uh, then you can you can sign up. But you might go even more when you know what the topic is next week that you definitely want to get involved. Now, Carol, I, I'm just talking through that now because they might be thinking this the same. It's one topic over the three pilot sessions or is the each pilot session, the three of them, different topics? Each topic is, each pilot it will cover a different topic. Fabulous. And as we do with these uh, 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 videos, Stuart, are the chats that we have week yeah. to week, we kind of branch off in different areas. So we yeah. don't just stick to one thing. It will lead maybe to other parallel topics. Okay, so right. we'll explore. Yeah. Um, we are allowing for five, this is where it gets exciting. We are allowing for five participants. Um, I'll have to be honest with you now, I am one of those already. <laughs> so does that mean Certainly four? Are. <laughs> is that is that mean four others or is that five on top? I think we're talking about five to six. Yeah. We'll see yeah. how many people apply. Okay. I think that would be the good the good place to start, don't you? And up to 80 observers. And this is, uh, if you've seen, because uh, we, were, we were talking about this, if you've seen music masterclasses, uh, you'll have musicians who are doing a masterclass with a top musician, and then you'll get loads of people in the, in the auditorium watching as well. It's that kind of feel, isn't it, Carol? It's exactly the yeah. format that I wanted to transfer into this so we'll have five to six people you'll all have your own technology and i'll be able to see and to help each one of you and you'll be able to ask questions and so it will be uh, you know five or six people working directly with me on something and yeah. then for those who don't want that pressure and just want to be in the auditorium as it were watching we'll have up to 80 places for that and we'll see how it goes we'll try it and see what happens and see what the feedback is Absolutely. Now, uh, this is obviously the awkward bit because I know people are now thinking uh, costs involved. Because this is a pilot, what costs are there? I don't think we're going to have any costs, Stuart. I think this is just a trial. Wow. Well, there we are. And I, I can understand that if it's a trial. We don't know how it's going to work. We don't know how the technology will work. We don't know if the, how the format will work. So you've got to trial it right. or pilot it at some point. So there we are. We're true, all, true enough. That's we're it. all guinea pigs. <laughs> and yes, I suppose if it does progress, and, and understandably, for your time and for your expertise, mm -hmm. we will pay in the future for, for masterclasses mm -hmm. in this format if it works. That's only fair, isn't it? Well, I see that's only fair. You, you, think of, you think of all what we've learned from Carol so far, all completely free of charge. I think absolutely rightly so. Yeah, future down the line, if it works, uh, then pay for a masterclass with Carol. But for this one, yep, yeah, pilot is free. So if you are interested in taking part, this is what you've got to do. Uh, send an email to... The, uh, you can see it there, Carol's uh, YouTube uh, sort of brand account, I Never Learned mm -hmm. to Sew, all one word, no gaps in it. Uh, so masterclass at I never learned to sew dot com. Um, and uh, uh, just state your interest. Just uh, go, yep, yeah, I'd love to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, involved in the pilot. Um, and this is uh, to state their interest to be a participant or an observer, or both, or what? What would you say Correct. for that, Carol? Yeah, just you know anything that you want to tell me that that you know you you want to do. You want to be a participant. You want to be an observer. You want to see a certain technique. Just or just tell me why you're interested. You know, just send me an email. Let me know who you are, what you're looking for, and then we'll use this feedback to co to come back to you. There we are. Do you know, I'm just thinking the observer thing. That reminds me of um, kind of being um, 
like in you know in, in lockdown when you were at home and you had the zoom meetings on but sometimes you didn't have to worry about putting your camera on you were just listening to it and you didn't have to participate as such you just had to be be there it's kind of like that as an observer you're you're watching and listening but there is no interaction there is there that's true so if if you're busy doing other things if you're at work, if you have other responsibilities yeah. and you just want to turn your camera off, but you want to watch, or if you want to watch and just ask the odd question, we'll have somebody monitoring the chat as well. Oh, wow. Even better. Yeah. Didn't know about that. So, right. so you, you, you've got to kind of work out what you want to get out of it yourself then, uh, because some people I can guarantee will probably be very happy just to be a participant and uh, and, and actually so, or some will, will be quite happy to be, just be an observer and watch the whole process and maybe ask a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And then we'll have a, a little bit of tech instruction for those who want to be a participant. We'll have a little, so that they can set up their work center like we set up a work yeah. center. So. We, we have another camera, but we'll, we'll go into that later. But, you know, just so there's another camera set up, their iPhone or whatever, so that we can watch what they're sewing. And, and okay, we can so do that. We, we work all that tech side yeah. up. And yeah. we can do that because of the wonders of technology and how it's moved on since COVID. And we're all used to that, aren't we? Uh, looking at Zoom, uh, it will all be done through Zoom and, and, and getting cameras. So, yeah, that's that's exciting. Well, there we are. If that interests mm -hmm. you, then send an email to masterclass at I never learned to sew dot com and register your interest. And we'll talk about the topics next week in our live session. So, yes, we will be with you. Oh, yeah, I put week eight there. <laughs> Look, uh, we are just going to quickly change <laughs> that so I don't confuse myself. Nine. The wonders of tech. Talk about go. technology. You did I that know, so fast. It's great. Um, <laughs> we are going to be live with you because uh, it works so well. And we thought for the final episode, because we don't do a demo on the final episode, because we're, we're just so ecstatic about the final and, and who won or who, who, who narrowly missed out. So we just end up talking about the whole process, talk about their makes mm. and celebrate the whole series. Uh, so I hope you could join us live for that so we can talk more about that. But there we are. That's next week. So let's go back to the semi-final then, which we had. I see there uh, our focus is top stitching, um, whether that's by hand or machine, Carol. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I saw a lot of top stitching in this video, and I thought um, for this uh, semi-final, yes, um, it's a good thing to focus on because you can top stitch, as you know, by hand, or you can do top stitching by machine. Um, both have their pros and cons about it and I thought well let's just cover that and that mm -hmm. I think might lead on to one of our master classes so I'll, I'll explain more about that but um, um, I thought I'd send a few images in of things oh, that yeah. I've made yeah Ooh, let's have a okay look. to talk about top stitching so top stitching Stuart it can be uh, decorative okay functional well, or both decorative okay. decorative or what did you say functional Oh, functional, yeah. Or both. So in this case, this little frat jacket with hand warmer welt pockets yeah. um, is quilted because we're, we're mixing two fabrics. We're mixing a wool blend, which is the navy, right. with a technical fabric that has a, a polyfill sandwiched in between the technical fabric and the lining. Oh, yeah. You're, and in you're... order to... This is my yep. stomping ground so, now, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely. So you know if you buy a down coat that you, you have channels where they fill in with, with the feathers, mm. or if you don't have feathers, you sandwich this in and you make this decorative quilting. So this was quite a large scale. This was uh, just over two inches cool, by two yeah. inches square. Yep, nice and big. And it, it made for a, you know, a really nice uh, casual garment. So. You know, I was really happy to to have this one um, come out so it. nice, khaki and khaki and navy, very yeah. sporty, unis, unisex. Um, yeah, so that's one example of yeah. you can see that it's both decorative and functional, but more functional. Um, this is a close up of a, a land suede coat it's that stunning. we did with one of our fashion startups, and thank you very much. So it has bound buttonholes which 
are top stitched through in the ditch. A so what? if you look at the bound buttonhole, that bit yes, there, so that bit there, it's all wow. it's all top stitched through to secure the the um, the well the jets um, to the lining of the pocket flap. Now I want to say a bit about parallel top stitching because you see with the pocket flap and the yoke and the collar and the armhole yeah. you have double layer of par parallel top stitching lines. Yeah. So you selected a stitch length. Okay. And now, okay, if you're just going straight across, well, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah. Straight Total. across, straightforward. Okay. Now, let's talk about working with a shaped section. Oh. Like the point of the collar, like the shape of our uh, pocket flap. There you are. Yeah. So you want to keep these stitches as parallel as possible. And if they're not parallel, it really does look out of place. Okay. Um, and it's not nice to look at. So you have to kind of judge where you, if you can, if you top stitch on the outside of your shaped pocket flap, okay, you're going to be stitching at about three mil, cool. two mil, three mil on the outer yeah. edge of your pocket flap yeah okay then you're going to put a stitching line parallel to that on the inside which might be a quarter of an inch away yeah so it, it's how to manage to keep that parallel so you almost have to um, eyeball or mark your oh, yeah. the intersection of where those line where you have to stop and turn your machine yeah and then continue sewing so that you maintain that parallel line of stitching. Yeah. And you might be able to see that on this particular pocket flap, I carried on with the stitch length that I, that I selected. But when I got close to the, yeah. the point that I had to stop and turn, I had to take a very small stitch. T see there? Absolutely tiny. Yeah. Nicely done. Nicely yeah. done. It is, yeah. it is literally that, one stitch. So I, I, when you were coming down, you're using your foot uh, pedal. Did you stop on that one stitch or did you go, did you turn it by hand a couple of stitches before so you had a bit more control? Yes, that's exactly what I did. So I started to slow down. I had just a point in my eye that I, you know, with experience, you know, you yeah. learn how to do this. Yeah. Um, and your intuition tells you where you've got to that point where you got close to that point then i just i took a, a slightly smaller stitch yeah. and then i thought i've got a little bit more to go so i just released the presser foot i've got a knee pedal turned the crank of the machine on the outside and just selected a very tiny stitch till i Brilliant. buried the needle exactly where i wanted to to bury it and then pivoted the piece and then kept sewing that, yeah, okay, and, so, and you're you're right there. That is experience because I know if that was me, mm -hmm. I I would take my stitch down and I've gone too low, <laughs> and, I'm, and I've got to do now two or three stitches <laughs> to get to that pivot point. Um, it is just something yeah. that comes with experience, isn't it? That that's right, yeah. and it's hard to mark leather because you can't get them, you can't get chalk out yeah. of it, and if you go too far and you put your shard needle your leather needle which has yeah. a shard on it if you make a hole in it oh. that hole is there yeah. it's very difficult to close up so you you really just have to practice and the, the one thing you can do is you can put a pin in that pivot point yeah and then when you take it out you've got that mark yeah yeah good point so you know what you're what you're aiming for so that is that's one uh trick that you can use to um take some pressure out of um, out of the technique and this middle section uh, to me that I, I would never have thought i know there's a little pivot point there but i wouldn't have thought that that was important so i would have just carried on sewing and stopped pivoted and sewn but actually you're right you still need it wonderfully symmetrical you need your that pivot point to be the the stitch, the center, don't you? And look what you've done yeah. there. You can see again where you've slowed down, 
gone down one small stitch. So you've got that stitch right in the perfect point of that patch. Right in, right in the point of that shape. Yeah. Because if you look vertically, you've got your buttonhole, your bound buttonhole, your button, your two points on the pocket flap, and that goes directly into a box pleat. So everything has to line up vertically. I'm just going to draw it. I'm just going to draw it bigger. Um, uh, what yep. am I doing? Because um, I just want to think Carry out a loud. More. I want to think yeah, out loud a bit. bit. Hang on. Um, so okay. I'm uh, because the stitch length is like uh, this is over the top. I know. Imagine yeah. I'm coming th down. My middle stitch though doesn't want to be like that, does it? It doesn't want to. No, no, no. It's it's going to look. No. You 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 still want your center stitch to be. One more. Go back. One more. Like that, don't you? Yeah. Yes. So you can draw your stitch up a little bit to the right and up a little bit to the left. Yeah. So you've got a V. Like that, and then you go again. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Wow. So just... all the, those V's have to all measure up. I'll line up vertically. Yeah. And the same I... with the collar. Exact same thing with the collar. The point of that collar. Yeah, it is. Just, I mean, that they were talking about uh, points, weren't they, on the um, the trench coat? But you look at that. So that 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 that. Oh, I can't. I can't get big enough. That so that tiny stitch there is actually a a little one down and a little one up. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny V. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and one thing, one thing to point out about working with leather is. It's an easier job because we don't actually sew the collar point and then turn it inside out. Oh. Because leather doesn't ravel. This is a raw edge. So our under collar oh. is sewn to the upper collar. And then normally what you do is you trim it. Oh, so wow. The under collar might be slightly bigger. Yeah. And then you top stitch to the, the perfect look that you want. And then you can trim the under collar away. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to worry about keeping those two edges even as you're top stitching the two of them together. Um, D does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've just got another question. Uh, sorry to go on about this. Uh, right angle here. Can you see that middle one and and that one uh, th there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've done it too big, that one. Let's I'm just going to draw it bigger again. So this is our right angle. Um uh, that's the edge of our fabric. Let's get rid of that. You've got your one close to the the, the two millimeters away. Is your right yes. th that one in the middle there? Is that literally a tiny one to the right and a tiny one down? That's right. Oh. Yes, the needle stops right in the point, right at that right angle. The needle stops there, and so then you, you pivot and wow. then you start another stitch. Now you go back to your normal length stitch. After, when you pivot. get you but you because i think i would have just gone like that like that and then oh no because that would have yeah that wouldn't you'd then get a jump wouldn't you? Yeah, you yeah yeah that's right because your stitches are right together yeah you don't have any space between them so because that is just i mean that got it, got it? that's <laughs> audience that's where you can appreciate the fine masterwork here it's yeah mm. absolutely and you can't rush that. Yet yeah, we often think that oh, top gosh, stitching no. is the thing that <laughs> no, you do at the end and you just quickly do. Well, actually, that's not. Yeah. Top stitching is, if not more time, because it's going to be seen, it's beautiful, and you want yeah. it exact like that. Yet yeah, we tend to wash, we tend to rush top stitching, don't we? That's right. With this kind of work, you, you cannot, there's no backspace key on a sewing machine, right? Yeah, you can't Oops. get out of it, so you don't <laughs> yeah. want to rush it because you, you can't tear your work apart. Um, I'm going to show you a trick in a minute of how to remedy something if it does go wrong. But you, you know, know, even when you're working with leather, everything stains it, even the oil on your fingers. So if you're going to top stitch, a, a make a garment like this, and you're going to get to the top stitching phase, you better make sure that your machine is clean, your hands are clean, you're in the right frame of mind to do this. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. you've got that that precision on your mind. It's 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 tricky. Mm. Wonderful. Right. I'm talking too much. So let's rattle through. And your last picture here. Well, I love this. Look at this pair okay. of jeans. So like, reminds me of is, like some sort of borrow uh, work. Yeah, I want to put this in because this is not about precision. So I got a commission from an um, advertising company that was working with Levi's and they just wanted me to just throw a bunch of denim, um, and make a flag <laughs> and, and stress, stress yeah. it and rough it up. So that's what we've got here. So this is all Love top it. stitching. But it's not precision. It's not precise. No one's going yeah. to check it. No one's going to interrogate it. It's so. So this was a really fun project. The pressure was off. Absolutely. <laughs> oh right. Well, let's go then, um, uh, and let's see some of your work because we we love it when we go to a demo. Uh, that's what makes these videos. Um, even though sometimes it's not about the demo. It's about just hearing you in you know the last 10 minutes of just talking top stitching there but it's always nice to to go to carol cam and see something so what are we gonna <laughs> what we what are you gonna show us first of all let's go let's go to carol cam so okay. we were talking about color points and things like that so i thought i would just talk a little bit about um some stitches because we're, we're talking about handwork now yeah i've shown you all the machine work so here we go we're here and I've got what looks like the point of a jacket collar, right? Oh, yeah, 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 your yeah. nice lapel. Yeah, the, yeah, I get you. I can see the orientation. Um, I'm working with some Gutterman top stitching fabric. Okay. Oh, no, that's uh, a good... Sorry, that's a, that's a good point, because Tony got pulled up with that, didn't he? Top stitching thread is going to be a lot thicker than normal sewing machine thread, isn't it? That's right. It is. Um, and it's easier to work with top stitching thread by hand with a bigger needle than it is to put it in the machine. Yeah. Because you need a certain kind of needle to work with this. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a stitch called the pick stitch. It says P-I-C-K. P-I-C-K. Okay. The pick stitch is not to show underneath okay now i've gone ahead i don't know if you can see this i've made some little dots um oh it, the camera sometimes the camera is great with us and sometimes it's not today it's a bit pixelated oh i can see the dots now yes yep so, dot 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 oh, dot yeah dot, dot. okay so I'm going to put the needle into the into one of the dots, just picking up one layer of fabric only. And I'm just going to repeat this. All so the way you're, around the collar. So you're push you're you're going through, but you're not going through to the back. No. Oh, I've just realized in the name. So you are literally just picking, <laughs> don't, yeah, you're, you're picking right. up a little, I get you. Yeah. So just one layer of fabric. And this is a very chic top stitch that you can use on a collar or a cuff. And those dots, yeah. you're going, you're going in and up on every dot, in and up on every dot. Exactly. Right. Precisely right. So the length of the stitch is a half a centimeter. Okay. And this, the distance between is one centimeter. Oh, oh, now, yes, stay there. Don't move. Perfect. So you said, don't move. The, the stitch was half a centimetre, and then the gap between right. is a centimetre. One centimetre, okay? And you yep. can see the corner point that we're most concerned about. We want to make sure that we have some action right here at the corner, which is a 45 degree angle from the corner of the outside edge. And can we see the back? Just so we, we'll be like, can, can we, Oops. can we see? 
Here we go. Yep. You can see that Carol did go through. <laughs> what did they see? It happens. <laughs> you didn't want me to ask that for me, did you? <laughs> Oops, sorry. But they are, that's the way it is, isn't it? You, it's, yeah, that's it. So... Just, what just see do? if you can, if you, if you can hold that close again and do a stitch so we can see it. Or are you ripping it back? Yeah, rip it back. Yeah. So this is all you do. Take your work out. Take the, take the head of your needle. Yeah. One more. There. There we are. There's the perfect underside, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's live. We keep it in. That's yep, the way it should right. be. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I know. I was so concerned about watching the camera. Of course. Um, I, I, well, yeah, you're doing yeah. 50 billion things at once there. You've got... It. <laughs> so, so this is called the pick stitch, P-I-C-K. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you another stitch. Okay, so that's done. Okay, that's done cut this one off so that's done now this is how we finish uh some of our now can, can everybody see that what i've got here now is i have oh we have to wait don't we yeah it's it, sometimes the, your iphone is wonderfully quick and beautifully clear but, but as i say we we uh, the, the wonders of technology can sometimes everyone can be on the internet so therefore the signal is you just think it's got to come out of your house go up to a satellite come down to my house and then go back out to to the world again <laughs> it's it's, we're, it's uh, yeah so sometimes it's not as good but we can just make it out for the moment okay. i can see your points again your dots you can see the dots are a centimeter apart Okay. And this is how I would hand finish the collar edge of a tailored piece. And this oh. stitch is called the prick stitch. So this is, this is prick, because you're just pricking a little bit of the fabric. And it is, in fact, it's a back stitch. Oh, okay. So I've, I've come up in one of my dots, and then I'm going to put a stitch just behind it, just behind where the needles come up. And I'm going to go to the next dot. Now this can show on the bottom. This doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you can see that's just a tiny dot of a stitch that's visible. And then I go, see, we're working very, very close to the edge of the garment. And all this is, the purpose of this is not decorative. This is just functional. Okay. And it's done to keep all the layers of fabric together. Okay, so you can see, you can hardly see that. So you've, oh, right. So you've gone in. A tiny back stitch. Oh, I see. I've gone so where, just, where, just I, behind. I'm going just behind where the needle came up. I'm and going I'm in. And, my stitch. Ah. Uh, yep. And all that's left is that tiny dot. A small back stitch. Okay, now okay. I'm just going to go into the corner and show you again just one back stitch. I'm right in the corner now. Come on, and camera. And then when I take my render. back stitch, come on, camera, render. Yeah, I know. I it's frustrating. Especially when uh, when we were live and, and we went to your mannequin, it rendered beautifully and it was perfect. Now it's just not being so good. Um, that oh, well, okay, well, I'll, I'll stop now so that you can see the difference between the two. Yeah, I, wa I want to, yeah, hold it up close I'll and then it will, yeah. it will eventually render once we're there. Okay. Oh, I hope you I can, can see it. It's, it's, it, I can see, oh, right now we're there. Right now it's finally rendered. Brilliant. Move, move down a bit so we can see your prick stitch. Move down a bit. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, um, so, uh, <laughs> it's difficult left and right. There we go. Yeah, so we can yeah. see, so we can see the top part of the lapel. Yeah. Uh, what do you want me to do? Go down, up? Uh, hold it up to the camera, but also <laughs> this is like a driving lesson, isn't it? But go, um, go, but go, um, 
uh, push it away from you so we can see more of the top part of the lapel. And that now, I sit now the other way. <laughs> sorry, viewers. I yes. That's so cool. I can. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. I can see. I can see your your pick stitch brilliantly. I come down into more into the camera of the prick stitch. The other way. Other way. <laughs> We're nearly there. I don't know what to do. I can't see the top part of the lapel. There we are. There we are. Now come up to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Oh, there we are. Yeah. And that will render soon. Oh, wow. Now I can see it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so it's come out there. And then you're going to go as a back sits. You're going to go back in and up again. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So your stitch is underneath and it's a centimeter long. Wow. When your needle comes up, you go just behind it. So the stitch that you barely see yeah. is just a millimeter as opposed to this half a centimeter. And so as you said, this the, 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 the prick stitch is functional. You, you, you're, you're going to use the same color thread as the fabric. You're not going to see it. Exactly. You're, you're okay. quite right. Okay, yeah, so I, because the camera is is not really on our side, I'm just going to show you one more thing, okay? Okay. Because I had another demonstration, but I think we'll save it for the master class. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's. I want to show you. I want to show you this. It's called an arrowhead. Oh wow! Stitch. Right, that will render at some point. Oh wow! I can see it now. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, look at now, that, viewers. Now we can see that close up. Yeah, yeah ke keep it there. That's perfect. <gasps> okay. So, again, Stuart, I'm using the Gutterman top stitching thread. This takes about 30 seconds to make, 30 to 45 seconds. No. It's a real jewel of a finishing, uh, a finishing um, polish if you need oh. some reinforcement or some decorative. And it can be functional and decorative. Yeah. So as we're talking about top stitching, I'm thinking that if the viewers are interested, I can go through more stitches like this that are functional or decorative or both um, in one of our pilots. Well, okay? the, they, yes, if you're interested and, and you're signing up, um, put it in the email. The more, the more information, if you want to be a participant... <laughs> The more information you give Carol, you know she's going to tailor that to if if she gets six emails from people all wanting to learn, say, this technique uh, or or develop that top stitching different techniques, then the mm -hmm. your your pilot session will be um, tailored to that, won't it? Makes sense. That's absolutely right, and I I'm interested in the feedback. I'd like to know if, if there are viewers that have been watching the this series nine. Of the, of the Great British Sewing Bee, if there's something that maybe they remember from an earlier um, episode that they'd like us to cover, uh, maybe something they've been trying over the, ser over the series, uh, yep. having trouble with, you know, just we, we want to hear from you. And you're so good at letting us know what you like yeah. uh, and what you'd like to see. So we're just counting on that to continue, aren't we, Stuart? Absolutely. Um, and just so you know, the, 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 the technology that you see here is a different technology to what the masterclasses are. The masterclasses are Zoom. And, and you all know that works. Uh, that you, you log on. That Zoom does all the wonderful stuff with mics and, and cameras. Here, for this technology to get to YouTube, it's a different sort of format. This is more of a presenting technology. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to bear with microphones. Sometimes you might hear uh, a little bit of echo with Carol just because mm -hmm. she's got an earpiece in and there's another speaker and sometimes our technology fails us like that because it's more of a streaming software. But in the masterclass, mm. there'll be no issues of sound. There'll be no issues really with, with that sort of technology because it's a different technology, isn't it, Carol? Because I think your, your other half, That's Mike, right. does loads on Zoom, doesn't he? Does loads of, of, on Zoom uh, in America, in Japan, yeah. um, here in Britain, and my own um, uh, 
projects that I work on, we all we all use Zoom, yeah. and so you, you're right. The technology is slightly different um, to this, but this is streaming, and this is a it's a different yeah. kettle of fish altogether. But yeah, we, we we'll talk through that technology. So rest assured, viewers, that if you want to participate in this. Uh, we'll we'll help you through it with technology. Absolutely, and and don't be put off. So if you see me pixelate, or if you see Carol or that camera there pixelating, it is different uh, on on Zoom for sure. Right. Well, there we are. Let's then uh, have a quick flick through. Thank you for that, Carol, because we're going to see the top stitching come up many times as we talk through uh, the challenges and. Yes, the first challenge that we had was the pattern challenge. Well, a trench coat, Carol, 32 mm -hmm. pattern pieces, uh, and they've upped the time limit five hours. That was a huge challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, this is a trick. They're really tricky test. Um, uh, the buttons are, the, are very tricky, and I was so disappointed to see people with their coats on the floor trying to line up buttons. This is really too, it's too difficult. You need a table at, a, at the right height so that you can marry up, yeah. the, you know, the, the two four parts and get the buttons aligned, buttonholes and buttonholes aligned. So, but they did a very, very good job. Absolutely. We had one, you know, the, yeah, the one problem with Vicky was that I think she didn't have the surface area to mark her buttons up correctly. Yeah. And she got the buttonholes on the wrong side. She could have remedied that by putting the buttonholes just by making another set on the other side and sewing a button over a buttonhole. You know, it, it could have been remedied. Um, yeah. it, the mistake would have shown, but she could have got out of that trouble. But I dare say it was, it, again, it was just the tools. They, they don't yeah. have the right tools to do the, the, the proper job. Uh, we've got Mia in pink. We've got Tony Beanie, as we now call him, <laughs> affectionately call him. And then we've got um, asthma there. Uh, but when you look at them hanging there on the models, there is something quite special about those two, isn't there? Yes. In the pastel colours, yeah. where the buttons are in contrast, they're, they're quite chic. And it, it, because it's different, we're used to seeing trench coats, you know, the Burberry and the khaki and the yeah. army green. We're used to seeing it, but they are quite dazzling, aren't they? They do stand out because uh, of the colour. Absolutely. Color uh, well, they, they all did so well. I know it was um, the, the, the standing was Asthma first, Tony second, Mia third, and Vicky fourth. It was probably quite close between those two for second and third place. I think issues were with Mia's arm, the set-in sleeve, it was perhaps set-in wrong. And then I think Tony had a pucker there. Um, so not much in it. Um, but let's yeah. just take a moment because we're talking about top stitching. There wasn't much top stitching. It was quite kind of uh, invisible top stitching, no. wasn't it? It was all blended in. Yeah. Yeah, but that if, would have, I, if they did have that parallel top stitching, it would have added so much on yeah. the time that it was, was taken to finish. So we, and in fact, I missed it um, on the sample when they showed it, um, it because I guess the, my screen was particularly dark. Yeah, do you want uh, to have I a didn't look? I didn't see the top stitching. So yeah, that's the top stitching on the model. Yeah, You've got, it's so close to the edge. Is it that? I thought it was. The, no, oh no, is it? Yes, you're right. It, it yes, is. It's it's. it's Edge stitching. It's, in fact, what you're seeing is the seam allowance in there. That you think is, oh. the, is the um, top stitching, and I think the only two things that were top stitched were the collar and then the storm vent on the on the uh, left side as we're looking. The storm flap. Yeah, look at that. You could just see it there, very faintly. That's you're right. It's an edge stitch, that isn't it? So the yeah, edge stitch but then is for the belt. Yeah, oh, yes. belt, it was different. Belt, it was quarter of an inch. Yeah. So if you're doing classic top stitching, like your suede, um, uh, your leather jacket that you showed us, you, you would I, you would have the edge stitch, as, as you said, one or two mil, uh, but you would then have had another one there, wouldn't you? Definitely. And look at how, already look what that adds. To the yeah, yeah. It gives it so much yeah. more definition. If they did that to the epaulets, yeah. to the front edge, 
you know, to those shoulder seams. It would have yeah. really given the whole piece much more texture. But as you say, they had, it was a massive piece already, 32 pieces in five hours. It would have taken me probably an hour to cut the pieces out alone. So, <laughs> I know. Um, but um, there was a close up of um, Asthma's collar and it's exquisite. Take a look at this. Um, uh, where is it? If I can find it, look at that. Oh yes, yeah. she so she turned the under collar in before she top stitched it. So she's, yeah. I mean, asthma presses as she goes, doesn't she? She's a proper uh, couturier. She really knows how to build things and how to uh, you know build them up and, imp and just get every operation right so that when it's done, it th almost doesn't need a final press. Yeah, she's so good at just and, handling every operation as she goes. And and yes, that was one of the criticisms for, for Mia um, was, you can see there, it's, uh, it might even be, um, it's, oh no, that one's okay. It's a, it's a close up on the front, but I think it was the, yeah. the sleeves that, <clears throat> excuse me, that weren't, yeah. that weren't pressed. Uh, but well, that's, it's the time, isn't it? The element. Yeah, um, but nice. yes, it, yeah. if you press as you go, uh, I suppose pressing is probably, if you're going to go on the sewing bee, is that one of the things that just get stitched because you haven't, you know it's speed sewing. So do you just say, I'm not going to press? Well, if when you're pressing, you have to get up. You, you've yeah. got to stand up. You've got to walk over to your iron. You've got to press. You've got to walk back <clears> over to your machine. I don't think people have this nice neat sewing center you know yeah. i think they might have a smaller iron but i'm not i'm not sure but it, definitely you have to stop what you're doing get up and go press and then come back and sit down all those breaks add up but uh, yeah we've said it before we said it many times a phenomenal challenge to get <clears throat> a coat made in five hours mm. i mean okay, how, yes. how long would that belt have taken the belt uh Turning that round, we were talking about that with the other uh, one. What was it? The the the, yeah. the dinosaur kids one with those yeah. belt straps yeah. and the belt itself. It's a, a phenomenal yeah. achievement by those sewers. It cer it certainly is. I'm sure. Well, I, I'd like to know, but um, I don't know if we can know. But it seems to me that all the casual chatting. It's like, oh, what fabric have you chosen, and how yeah. are you going to do this, and you know, all that 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 cannot be included in the five no. hours. I don't think there's any way. I think they must have the, all the time in the world to cut things out, get everything ready before they start. The I process. hope so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, let's move on to the fun transformation challenge. There we go. Look at those four. <laughs> <laughs> I know the transformation challenge is, is perhaps not uh, some people's favourite of rounds. It can be a bit silly. Uh, but it is a different part of the brain, isn't it? You either follow a pattern or you're a, a designer that can just create. And this is where some of those sewers really excel. <laughs> but yeah. I like this challenge a lot. I really do like this challenge. This gives you an opportunity to just have some fun. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, this was just way out there with the cleaning products. And I mean, the dress made of gloves. That was just... That was just the yes, wackiest thing Mia's, I think I've ever, ever seen. Uh, rubber gloves. <laughs> but you think 90 minutes to, to make that, certainly uh, when you look at Vicky's wonderful, not only did she have her uh, pleats, the pleat fan there, but she had this sort of patchwork woven effect that she created. And that You know, little gems like that that pop up. Mm. Which she hit on that so fast, didn't she? She yeah. just took one of the aprons and just pleated it up. She, and then just something happened in her, in, yeah. you know, inside. She thought, I'll, I know, I'll cut strips and I'll plait them. You know, and, I'll weave, and there it was, it was done. Um, and I know that's what they wanted, <laughs> uh, a stylish garment or an ingenious garment. So there's some in, ingeniousness yeah. there, isn't there? Totally. Totally. And nobody would expect that. No. I think we would, you probably could, in the far reaches of your brain, do something with the rubber gloves. <laughs> um, <laughs> the pom-poms, the scours, because they were there. And you thought, this is so incongruous to sewing. Yeah. I know, let's use them. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but the asthma, final... that, this seems to be, uh, for asthma, this seems to be a thumbprint of a lot of things that she's done. Yeah. A fitted bodice, a, a fluttery sleeve, you know, so for her, I think she was just kind of staying in the vein. Yeah. But Vicky went well off piece. Um, yeah, Vicky. And then Tony, bless him. Yeah. Tony, he was... He he, he 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 did seem like he knew he was struggling that round. He's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, like that, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, but still very clever. The two tabards yeah, like so. that. Yeah. Yeah. All, almost yeah. like a um, a nineteen twenties flapper skirt um, with the with the, the 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 mop perhaps being you know the <laughs> that bit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the frilly skirt. <laughs> Indeed. Um, oh, it's so, the, so refreshing. Isn't it? So the final scores were first place was Asthma, Tony. Oh, no. Tell me if I turned the page. No, no. Didn't Vicky <laughs> nope. Uh, Vicky. What am I saying? Vicky was first. Mia was second with the rubber gloves. Um, Asthma third. Tony fourth. Um, there. So uh, Vicky's went from bottom um, of the the trench coat to top uh and so you, you're kind of thinking right okay has that was that enough to save her everything was going to play really for the for the made to measure and the made to measure was this uh boiler suit which i i had a big conversation with ting about this a boiler suit made to measure uh how much of the brief was explained to them uh because they did say about this this more modern fitting boiler suit, jumpsuit idea of mm -hmm. uh, that Emma Thompson was wearing. But it seemed like mm -hmm. some perhaps didn't know that. So some created more of a traditional boiler suit with plenty of space in so you can reach up and bend down. So it necessarily wasn't fitted mm -hmm. and used the belt to fit, yet some were fitted. So it was a bit of a, I don't know, a, 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 whether yeah, whether the brief was clear. I, I, I know where you're going. I. It is a made to measure, but just as Mia got away with making her Chanel boxy jacket in a made to measure, I thought there should have been a bit more leeway regarding the tolerance of these, of these yeah. outfits because like you say, they're belted. It's not a fitted garment. It's not, you know, this is not to be painted on. So I, I, I was a bit confused by this. Yeah, because I, I felt when we looked at Asthma's, which was stunning for that mm. type of a garment, and then you look at Tony's, which was also stunning because of all the pockets mm -hmm. and the space there. Mm -hmm. it, w it was almost like they, they loved the, 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 the concept of the, the posh, fancy high fashion boiler suit and i then felt bad for tony because tony had made a, a boiler suit um that mm -hmm. had all the pockets on and and was a classic boiler suit so how do you judge the two See, it's it's, they're almost tricky. two different concepts uh, aren't they that i would i would agree with that and also you look at the size of the model asthma has been blessed with a model which is if she's a size eight maybe yeah. a six and most anything is is really going to to, to look flattering okay so so the bottom half of this suit is a bit is a bit bigger than the top half yeah asthma's it's very billowy over the hips and where yes. mia got called up because mia used a stiffer fabric around the hips this had tolerance around the hips if you look at the way that her hands in the pocket there's plenty of room yeah that's me in asthma's where yeah. this one looking at mia's now it's they said oh, it looks like you know the, it's too big around the hips well Mia had made the alteration. She took two inches out of the hip on her side. Yeah. So she made accommodations for that. But, you know, when you sit down in a garment like this, the body expands and you need that room. Yeah. So this is, you know, most of these were casual garments except for asthmas, where she was yeah. kind of a, cl a clubbing garment, wasn't it? Oh. The it, other thing it, I would say is there was a lot of, um, yeah, and, and, and so Tony has a, a, a fuller figured model. Yeah. So you're not going to get the same look. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm not I, sure I just thought, I, 
it felt it came across that like they, they we absolutely love this spoiler suit, but it's but I, and yes, I did love Asses, but it was a different for a different time. Had they all been told to make a boiler suit that was a high fashion that like Emma Thompson was made, mm -hmm. they would have all done that. And then you could have judged that fairly. I, I, I just felt if I was Tony and then I suddenly saw Asmus, I've gone, oh my God, have I not done a boiler suit? Um, oh, yes. they, 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 yeah. or they like yeah. that posh boiler suit, but I've done, I've done a, a boiler suit with loads of pockets. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe I'm just looking it's, into it too much. No, no, no. And I would say that um, Asmus was a jumpsuit. Jumpsuits are in. It's a fashion garment. I wouldn't yeah. call Asmus a boiler suit. I would call that a jumpsuit with decorative pockets. Yeah. You know, jeweled pockets. Oh, it was. And, and that was lovely. Look at this. Clo look at the close up here. Look at that. I mean, that yeah. is phenomenal work, isn't it? That We can all respect that, can't we? Totally. And look how even her pocket line is. If you can, you draw a line along the bottom of that pocket and it's absolutely oh. symmetrical. Yeah. And yeah, the top stitching. She just or the, handles the, every detail yeah, yeah. so well. Everything all along the way. But I like Tony's because, I mean, Tony was expressing his, the, the vein yeah. that he likes to work in. He loves the camel. He likes, you know, the a contrast. And he put in, you know, hundreds of pockets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a pocket <laughs> that goes in there. And then a pocket that goes in there with behind the mesh. You got every pocket had two, I think. One, two, three, four, yeah, eight, eight pockets. Um, so the, the use of colour, the use of yeah. colour, the use of top stitching, the clever the way that he enhanced it, I, the enhanced things. I think I do remember, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the opening brief, somebody said, either Patrick or Esme said, lots of pockets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, he, took, it's, he took that part of the brief. Um, yeah, it's just where you then, I know we've often said this with the, the brief, it's more of the production side, not the sewer's side. Um, and maybe it's because we just look mm -hmm. into it too much because we love the show uh, and it just makes us, you know, you just feel, oh, maybe it's, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> this look at Vicky's <laughs> because I felt Vicky's, um, let's get the long shot of Vicky. Uh, she's done, uh, like Asma, a more modern boiler jumpsuit effect mm -hmm. um, with a, yes. you know, a little pocket on. Um, uh, it's, this, it's is, this is a very difficult figure to dress. If you're going to fit the shoulders, then you have to make accommodation for the bus darts so that you accommodate the bus line and that's not too uh that well that's not too tight or or yeah. too big then you've got a hip to waist ratio which is quite challenging so if you're dressing a size six figure like asthma then you are working with a basically a cylinder with a belt on it right yeah but if you're going to fit a figure like this and you have a derriere that's quite pronounced, and you have yeah. a bust line that's quite pronounced, you're going to need a lot of darts. A lot of sewing, a lot more sewing. A yeah. lot of elastic in, in the back of the waist, because she did say she made an adjustment for sway back. Yeah. She made adjustments for all sorts of things. Also, when you talk about the length of the rise in the jumpsuit from the crotch to, to the shoulder, um, it's a lot of these, well, there's only four, but three of four were caught up because they were a bit short in the rise. Yeah, I think that's I've not got... particularly, that's not altogether true. There okay. was plenty of fabric, but it has to do with the distribution of the fork. You know, how long is the fork line in the back? How long is the fork line in the front? Do they meet in the center? And if you get that distribution wrong, then you end up pulling the back into the front. Now that doesn't mean it's too short in the rise. It means that the fork line isn't distributed oh. as efficiently as it could be. So that might be another thing that we explore 
a little bit further and we might talk about trousers and we might okay. talk about the pattern we might talk about distribution and we might talk about front to back balance in a garment so that's that's another thing that's just come up because it's easy to look at a garment and say oh i see lots of lines i see lots of stress marks so that means this not necessarily oh. i will go into that more fascinating okay. Fascinating, Carol. I I just love. I could just sit here and I don't know many people say it. I could just sit and just listen to that, uh, and I don't have to talk or anything. Just sit and listen. Aww. It is, yeah. It just opens our our eyes to it. And I I know it's a TV show, and they haven't got time. They do judge longer, uh, viewers. Just so you know that that um, Patrick and Esme do look at each garment for a long while. Uh, some are saying it's o over twenty minutes, which we don't see because they can't. Their, their judging is cut down. And and remember, they don't even choose the cutting, do they? There's an editor choosing what's cut. And an editor probably yes, doesn't have any knowledge of sewing. So he's he's grabbing, he or she is grabbing bits. So we have to understand that, that maybe the judging's comments are taken out, cut, pasted, and in all sorts. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world, really, when you think about it from that point of view, how things can get lost in translation or we think things don't happen, but they actually do. It's just not in the edit because they've got to get it down to an hour show. That's right. And I've been part of some of these shows and, and the producer will say, can, you, can we just do an outtake? Can you just say, oh, that's all over the shop? So yeah. it gets you to say things that are in Congress to what's happening, but yeah. they want to put it in. Yeah. That's uh, part uh, of it as well. Really important. So I know when we critique the judges like that, that, they're, that you know, they're, they're, their words and all their spiel has been cut out sometimes to nothing. Um, and, and we want more. But I hope then someone listens about that there is an audience for more give us more give us more on bbc4 or another channel where we can have a longer show or a different type of show I'm sure I'm sure someone someone yes. listen please give us more yes. <laughs> um yes, so, which is exactly cool. so we can explore technique absolutely but we're giving you more in the meantime, aren't we? <laughs> so uh, the garment of the week, understandably, it was beautiful. The fabric was beautiful. It it, it worked as a, as a as a concept of this swish, you know, a posh dinner do at the uh, the, the cinema or whatever. It's it, it it is it was wonderful. So I can understand why that got garment of the week uh, fully deserved. Um. But uh, we had to um, then say goodbye to someone, didn't we? Uh, where are we? Yes. Let's get my, get my buttons yeah. right. Um, and, um, yeah, we had to say goodbye to Vicky. Vicky, yeah. There. She, it, it, was, it, it wasn't as hard because she didn't seem to mind all that much. It wasn't a surprise to her. She, in many ways, maybe was just, it was time for her to go home. Yeah. She's ready. Uh, to, to call it a day on it, on the, you know, maybe the stamina wasn't quite there at the end, um, but she took it well, which makes it easier because it is a heartbreak. Oh, when, um, I think even Sarah, Sarah gets quite teary when she, she when does. She says yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we've, we've been with these sewers, you know what it's like. We've been with these sewers for nearly 10 weeks. And, and if Vicky was your favorite, because everyone's going to have their own favorites for whatever reason, it could be in the family. So therefore you want Vicky to win. Um, and she's obviously had to keep it secret. And you're like, oh no, she's out at the semi-final. You're going to, of course you're going to be gutted. Uh, that's why we love it because you have your, your favorites um, and you follow them, follow them through. So you've been on that journey with them. And especially with Vicky, we were seeing her really come out. Was it a couple of weeks ago? absolutely just shone with some of those makes and we were then saying right yeah she's gonna go, go all the way get into the final and just just to miss it yeah. but um so we've got our final then haven't we that's but it so we've got three. and i think who, in, in who, this one i think i think all of them are winners i think i would i would say they all have every right to be there and i think i would say they all they They've all gone a long way to winning this already. 
Absolutely. And as we said before, any one of them could win it, really, um, because uh, people, you could have a bad week, just one bad week. And it's, you know, it's not judged on what you've been like for the last eight weeks, is it? it if, you, if you just have a you mess something up, it can all come tumbling down. So anyone could win it. Um, who's, who do you want to win? Let us know in the comments. Um, we'll be talking to you live next week and we'll be live at 9 p.m in fact we've got two shows if you want to join us um, i'm doing it with ting at 8 p.m far unpicked and then we'll be live at 9 p.m chatting away with you all there'll be no demo for the last session because it'll just be we'll all be caught up with we're talking about their makes and obviously who won. Because <laughs> there might be many people, you don't know how close it's going to be. There might be many of you going, oh, why did he not win? Or oh, why did she not win? It's going, to be, it's going to be fun to talk about it, isn't it, next week? <laughs> It'll be a great fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really excited about it. I don't want the week to zip by, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I know. Uh, so join us at 9 p.m. live in YouTube. Let's chat about your comments. Uh, will will you be heartbroken? Will you be over the moon? It's going it's going to be exciting. So there we are. Hope that was a, uh, of worth to you and you took some value from it. Um, I know the camera's a bit choppy and, and everything, but I know you you understand that. But um, uh, we enjoyed sharing it all with you. So here's to one more week, the final. And don't forget, go back to that slide, pause it if you're interested. In, in joining the masterclass it's the pilot free no fee at all you can get involved and send that email to i never learned um uh, to sew all there um and carol will get it and start looking at it so thanks everyone thank you carol and see you next week for the final ta-ra bye everyone bye